everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be tying John Barr's Jumbo John. Um, absolute killer on the water. One of my favorite patterns to fish and to tie. They're just lots of fun to tie, so um, let's get started. In the vise, I have a streamer hook. This is a size 10. That's accompanied by a 3.8 millimeter um, I guess fluorescent orange tungsten bead and I will be putting a full description uh, a full I guess the full recipe in the description below so be sure to check that out um, and then also I want to hear from you guys what are some of your color combo favorites for uh, the jumbo John or the copper John um, again really really awesome flies to tie so um, for my th thread I'm just going to be using some black 70 denier and I'm going to get started right behind the bead here. Work my way to the back. And then right before the bend at the hook, this is where we're going to tie in our Goose Biots. Uh, I don't know the exact color. I took them out of the original packaging and I just I shoved them in these smaller ones for just some better storage management. Um, but it looks like a burnt orange. And I've cut off two here. And I'm just going to be tying in my tails here. Use your judgment on, on length. Uh, these can be short or, or fairly long as well matter of preference at this point. And then once those are in position, you can lock those down. I'm gonna work my way right to the front of the, uh, right behind the bead again. Just gonna make a quick adjustment here. Now we're gonna be tying in our ribbing. Uh, in this case, it's actually gonna be the body, the abdomen as well. And I'm just, I'm using some orange large soft wire. And I like to tuck this in behind the bead. And then work my way to the back. At this point, I'm usually keeping in mind um, consistency on my wraps with the wire um, because I do want a smooth body, um, no lumps or bumps. Uh, because if the smoother it is, the easier it's going to be to. <clears throat> um, wrap the wire and keep those keep those wraps as tight as possible. So now I'm going to work my way and with my thread I'm going to build a slight taper. Uh, you don't want too much taper especially when wrapping the wire because that's when it'll start to slip and fall and you get these gaps um, that you probably won't recognize with the naked eye but if you go take a picture um, you'll start to see it. That's probably more of a me issue than it is a you issue. And just occasionally uncording my thread to flatten it out.
you can see we're almost there getting that ta that taper I have tied these with a 140 denier thread um, which of course makes this process a lot quicker I guess I could always tie off do my clinch knot and start a new thread but I don't mind it's part of the game okay I think we're good there and you can see where I stopped my thread uh, and this is just eyeballing it based on you know I'm going to be tying on a thorax some rubber legs uh, a wing case and some longer legs as well so I'm probably going to stop it about here um, and then probably tie back a little bit further as I tie in the wing case. But um, that was confusing. Now you'll see what I'm talking about when I get there. So now I'm just going to tie and wrap my, uh, my wire. And I'm just being careful and just trying to get these wraps as tight as possible. And what I kind of do is I'll kind of overlap the previous wrap just a little bit and it'll kind of slide off that next one. So I'm coming in like this way and it's sliding down. As I get older, my eyes aren't as good. So occasionally you can come in here with your fingernail and just push them a little bit closer and tighter together. And this is where tapering that body with the thread can really make this stand out nicely. tie this off so I'll do two wraps in front two wraps behind two more and then with the large wire with the ultra wire um, it is not as easy to helicopter off as like say small or extra small wire so what I find is bending it first kind of help it come right off and if it doesn't then helicoptering it will come off easier okay so even though I came down further than I wanted to I, I did that intentionally because I'm going to tie in my wing case now and I'm going to be coming back anyway I'm going to be coming over those probably one or two wraps of, of the wire um, for this I'm just going to be using some basic scud back this is just in black I'm just gonna cut a quick little notch and then you just want to make sure you have this right on the center of the hook shank And then bring that back to where you want your wing case to start. See, so I'm just checking where I'm at. At the same time, kind of seeing how much room I have to play with here. I'm going to tie that all down.
check your underside of the fly. Yeah, it's not bad there. So I have, you can see here what I'm referring to when I'm double checking is the space from my wing case to my, my bead. Do I have enough room there for a nice thorax, my rubber legs, um, and then some, uh, some additional legs that we're gonna be using some hen for. Um, now it's completely optional. You could put the legs on now, the rubber legs. I like to put a little bit of the thorax first. Um, that way I'm not trying to make a bigger thorax all at once with my rubber legs in place. So I'll, I'm just putting a little bit now. It doesn't even need to be perfect. It's just to help build up the, the final thorax, I guess you can say. Um, for my dubbing, I'm just using a, a burnt orange uh, ice dub. I like to add a, something different to all my flies. Sometimes it's something as small as the color tail or color wing case, uh, whether it has UV properties on it or not, um, especially in places in water that's kind of heavily angled, um, like if it's got a lot of fishing pressure, I think those, they've seen every fly at that point, they probably have a ton of natural bugs and stuff they're eating anyway, I mean that's why they're sitting in there, um, so sometimes just having a common food source but with a slight variation will trigger them so that's kind of my thought process on on all the flies I tie so I'm just gonna bring this back and again don't worry too much about it being perfect because we're literally just gonna wrap over it so it gives us a nice starting point now we're ready to tie in our rubber legs I'm going to be using some centipede legs. These are just uh, speckled orange. I love the color and, and the, just the the speckled black on it. I think it's just a phenomenal color. I'm just going to swing one on that side. Swing one on this side. I do want them fairly splayed out. And then we're going to put on some more dubbing and that's going to help position them even more. So now that I got them in place, uh, I'm going to bring my thread behind the rear legs. Because now we're ready for some more dubbing. So we're going to kick these legs forward, get a nice wrap right behind those legs, get those back into position. And now you can see what happened is that they came kind of like at a 90 degree to the hook shank there. So I'm going to pull these back and with the dubbing, I'm able to put, I'm able to manipulate them back to where I want them. Make sure those are fully in position. I'm just going to grab a little bit more dubbing here. When your hands are really are, are dry, like I'm having a dry hand day, 
um, it does make it more difficult to dub certain dubbings. Or it makes it hard to noodle, I should say. Um, so, yeah. I'm not sure how much of a tip that is, but it does make it more difficult. So I don't know whether damp your hands or like go to the pharmacy and get some cream or something. <laughs> I'm having a chalky hand day. Um, so that's how sort of things are going to look now. And my legs are looking nice and splayed out. Um, so now we're ready to tie in our larger legs. For this specific color combo, um, I picked out some, this is some ring neck pheasant. Uh, this is a rump hatch and which has been dyed orange. Some pretty cool stuff. I mean, some of the colors on here, I don't know if they're gonna show up, but they're so vibrant. It's got some like greenishes and blues, some, some peacock like uh, right at the tips. And then obviously that orange to match the, the theme of the fly. Uh, so I thought it was kind of perfect for this one. Uh, and what I've done is I've just taken one feather and we're gonna be tying this in tip first. So with the tip first, you kind of preen those fibers back. And you, you, you cut in that sort of, that triangular tie-in point. Okay, and now if these legs get in your way, you can try to put these back. I got a hair clip that's far too big for this fly, but may help out. And now we're just gonna tie in our, our hen feather. I found that if you if you crank down too hard at first, you risk cutting the stem because it is a fairly thin stem. So if you can, uncord your thread. And then once you have a few wraps in, then you can kind of cinch down and really crank down on it. And I got a few tips that I'm just gonna clean up. And now as we start to wrap this, just kind of want to sweep those fibers back. You can go as, as thick or as sparse as you want on your legs here. Nip off your waist end. We've tied in our hen, and now we're ready to just kind of wrap this up, flip over our wing case. Uh, what I like to do is you can either cut off the top ends or you can kind of sweep them down. I always just judge it based on, you know, how many do I have underneath here? And I think, you know, just evenly sweeping these down will do the trick. So once you have those swept down, Flip over your scud back. Tie this in. Again, just making sure it's nice and centered. So two in front. Two in back. And then with the scud back, it, it's kind of stretchy. So if you give it a, a pull before you cut it, when you cut it, what it kind of just kind of sucks underneath the thread wraps there. So that'll come in handy. Um, now we're ready for some whip finishes. 
And then we're going to polish up the fly a bit. Okay, so for the legs, um, you can eyeball it. Um, you could bring them up, cut them to measure, and then start from there. Kind of like to have a rough starting point as well. So I'll just put them all up, pick a spot, be brave, just give it a snip. And then from there, you can use your own judgment, whether you want them shorter or longer, I want them a bit shorter in this case. Not bad there. And now we're going to top it off with some UV finish. So this I'm just using some uh, some loom. This is the thin. And I like to thin for the for the nymphs. This gives me a little bit of time to play and manipulate it a bit before it starts to move around too much on you. That with the torch. Look at those. Look at those legs shine. And there you have it. This is John Barr's Jumbo John. Um, this was a size 10. Yeah, size 10. You can even do a size 8. Uh, I'll typically tie them in 10s and 12s. And resident trout, brown trout, and steelhead particularly like this for me. Uh, so, hope you give it a shot. Hope you tie one on. Uh, best of luck on the water. Cheers.